Welcome to a new sort of like mini series I'm doing. This is um, different than other stuff I've done. Um, I want, I thought it would be good to make this series of videos speaking to subjects or questions that I get regularly. Uh, and a lot of this is going to be for new sailors or people just getting in to sailing or interested in cruising. This is mostly geared towards towards that crowd. Um, so that's what this whole series is going to be about. And I hope you find it useful. Um, and I hope it helps you move forward at chasing your impossible dream. Hello friends, <clears throat> on this episode we're going to talk about security at sea. <clears throat> I get asked on the regular about if I'm worried about pirates attacking me in the middle of the ocean and stealing all my stuff. <clears throat> that is primarily an imaginary boogeyman. Um, pirates operate in very specific and only a few places in the world. We all know about Somalia. Um, and off the coast of, basically off the coast of Africa, above Namibia, all the way up. If you're too close to the coast, you're, you, you're setting yourself up for a heartache, um, as far as that goes. <clears throat> it's important to make a distinction between the idea of pirates and bandits. Now, when I say bandits, I'm talking about local thieves that are in villages or towns or whatever. Pirates generally operate offshore. They don't operate very far offshore. They're usually in fast boats. Um, and again, with the hot spot being the Suez Canal, the entrance to the Suez Canal from the Indian Ocean. Um, now bandits, you can get robbed anywhere. That's not difficult to do. <laughs> um, a lot of that has to do with like not giving the oppor giving them the opportunity to rob you either with you in person or when you're away from the boat. So those are easy things to sort of like avoid happening, making it easy for them to rob you. Uh, there's other hot spot, you know, there are hot spots for bandits where they operate and yachties getting boarded and robbed. Right now the worst kind of place where it's been happening a lot is the Philippines is really bad right now. So the Solomon Islands are pretty sketchy. Papua New Guinea is very sketchy. Um, there's all kinds of places <clears throat> where there's bandits that operate locally. There's an amazing website called Noonsite. I think there's a, I think now you have to pay like a slight monthly fee. It's very small, but for the amount of information you get from it, it's a, it's well worth paying the fee. I pay, I pay the monthly fee for it. Um, but on noon site, you can go to any country in the world and they have firsthand reports of all crimes that have happened to yachties from those yachties submit, oh, this happened to us in this location. We had our dinghy stolen here, or outboard here, or we were robbed at gunpoint, whatever. <clears throat> For the most part, most countries are incredibly safe. I haven't been anywhere that was even remotely sketchy in you know the over 8,000 miles of so the, actually the only place I wouldn't leave my dinghy on the beach because I thought it would because I knew it would get stolen was in Hawaii like literally nowhere else has it been an issue in French Polynesia I would lock it to the boat with like a bicycle lock because I didn't want to haul it up on deck every night <clears throat> um, just so that if someone did come around and check at night they if they saw that, they wouldn't mess with it because they're like, well, it's not worth making the noise for just a simple dinghy. So, and again, <clears throat> I locked my boat when I would leave it in French Polynesia and like close the hatches and everything just in case there was somebody on shore that was watching me and was going to take the opportunity to like dip in the boat, grab what they could and run. So, if you don't like set yourself up to get robbed, a lot of times that's like the best sort of like, you know, defense <laughs> is like, just don't, don't make it easy for them. 
because that's thieves look for like opportunity my mama always said like never give someone you know the opportunity to make the wrong decision so <clears throat> that's really the key as far as robbery goes and dealing with bandits but even more so <clears throat> just like don't visit places if you're concerned about it don't visit places that are known spots like i would never take my boat to the philippines because so many boats have been getting boarded and robbed that it's just like you know not worth it especially me being solo so yeah pirates are not a concern bandits are always a concern no matter where you are but just set yourself up to not get robbed and um, that's going to solve a lot of that problem another thing to know is i definitely met some sketchy people on the street in fiji which i don't mind it added a little color after being in french polynesia which is incredibly safe and like french tourist vibe <clears throat> but people would see me in the dinghy and maybe not even see what boat i left from but i had some dudes be like oh which boat are you on and i would always lie and be like oh yeah i'm on that i'm on a big boat i wouldn't point to them or tell them or anything i'm like oh i'm on my big boat with like four other dudes and we're driving here you know and they'd be like oh are you the owner and i'm like oh no no i'm just hired crew so I would always lie when somebody asked me, oh, well, what boat are you on? Unless it was another yachty. But if it was a local or a lands person, I would always lie. I'd be like, oh, yeah, me and my four buddies are sailing, blah, blah, blah. Even if they saw me on my boat, I would say there were multiple people. <clears throat> so they never knew if there was somebody on board. Um, you know, because that's the issue, solo. It's like, once you leave, there's no one to, like, watch the boat while you're gone. So that's something to keep in mind for sure. Now, a lot of people have asked me if I carry guns. And, well, I should say a lot of people. A lot of Americans have asked me if I should keep guns. <clears throat> I grew up shooting guns. I've been shooting guns since I was six years old. I still own a handgun. I keep it at my brother's house in California. I would never have a firearm on my boat for a variety of reasons. For one, first of all, it's just not that dangerous. Once you leave America, it's not that dangerous out in the world. No matter what the, like you know doom doom porn of the news or whatever websites tell you it's not that dangerous in the world um but the main thing to know is like if you carry a firearm on your boat most countries you can't bring a firearm into that country so you declare it <clears throat> most countries will take your gun and put it in a safe in the customs office you have to fill out a ton of paperwork and then you have to arrange to receive it as you're clearing out. So then you go, you fill out more paperwork, you get your firearm back, and then you know they like you you leave the country immediately. Um, if you think you're smart and you're going to hide the gun, and then they won't know, and you'll still have it to protect yourself, and you get caught with that gun, then you're an arms trader, and you go to prison for the rest of your life, and your boat's impounded. So spend the rest of your life in a foreign prison. For no good reason. Um, <clears throat> so, and the other thing is like, Lynn Pardee's talked about it in her books. I can't remember which book she wrote about it in, but she said her and Larry were speaking to a sheriff in Mexico. And she asked him about carrying firearms, what his opinion was. And he, he said, are you willing to kill the person that's coming on your boat? Now, I know a lot of macho dudes would be like, oh, yeah, I'll kill them. They come on my boat. Okay, whatever. But for most of us, for most of us, we don't want to have to lay down, even if we did kill the person in self-defense or because they were going to rob us. I don't want to lay down every night for the rest of my life and think about that person's face and the fact that I killed them. And that sheriff told Lynn and Larry, he was like, if you have a gun, you have to either kill that person or he has to kill you so you don't kill him. So, that was the most compelling argument for me. Especially because if you think about it, if they're robbing your boat, chances are it's a case of you're in an economically depressed area, he's trying to supply for his family, we're on a shiny yacht, living a vacation life. And so he's like, well, if I steal their cameras and their computers, I can sell them and my family's going to eat, you know. And of course, there's always like, there might be druggies that are doing it, whatever. But 
it might be that you're killing someone and leaving a family without a husband who was just trying to do what he could. And I'm not justifying it. I'm not saying it's okay. But you have to think about all of that stuff, you know. I mean, it might be better to, like, have hiding places instead of for a firearm. Hide, you know, have hiding places for your primary laptop and your iPad and all that stuff. And then have, like, old devices <laughs> that were available that if someone did board you, you'd be like, oh, here, give them old cell phones or iPods or something and be like, or an old shitty laptop. Be like, there you go. Um, and it, But again, it's so rare for this stuff to happen unless you put yourself into waters where it's known to happen that it's really not something that you should lose sleep over. Um, <clears throat> Lynn, I just interviewed Lynn Party a couple days ago and for my pot my new podcast and she told me when her and larry were in mexico there was a dude that broke out of prison and this was in like the 60s or 70s he broke out of prison and boarded one boat shot someone and killed him couldn't figure out how to drive the boat like it was a dude by himself on a sailboat Went to another boat that had a couple on it. Or he like, I think he stabbed the dude because he didn't have a, he didn't have a gun. Went to another boat, asked them, they were Americans. He was like, where are the, where's the guns? Where are the guns? For some reason, they, they showed him where the guns were. He instantly killed the husband and then turns the gun on the wife. Was like, okay, start, show me how to start this boat. And so she starts it, gets the boat driving and everything. And then she jumps overboard to save her life and swims off. Uh, he didn't know how to drive a sailboat, so he ended up on the rocks real quick. <clears throat> and he ended up being captured. <clears throat> Lynn and Larry had to go with the wife, who swam to shore, and help clean up the boat, you know, after the remains were removed from the boat of her husband. So, you know, she was saying, like, had the guns not been on there, he probably would have left and gone to another boat. So... Those are all things you have to think about, you know, when it comes to that sort of question. And again, for the most part, don't go to places where there's known crime and theft. And it's all, you go on noon site, it's going to tell you everything you want to know about every spot. Um, now, if somebody's trying to board me and I am worried about my safety... And I don't, you know, I'm like, this is going to be bad. I would not hesitate to shoot them in the face with a flare gun. And if you shoot somebody in the face in a dinghy with a flare gun, chances are they're not going to board your boat. Now, they might shoot at you if they have guns. But if it comes down to that, I would definitely unload a flare gun into someone's face right quick. Another good option for self-defense in that sort of scenario is those, like, wrist rockets <clears throat> and big steelies. You, shoot, you hit somebody in the temple... Or in the face with a big steely from a wrist rocket. And uh, chances are they're going to turn the dinghy around <laughs> and head back to shore. So those are a couple sort of like non-firearm possibilities for defending yourself. But for the most part, it's not an issue. And then you could always go the old school route. Make sure you have some tacks on board. Sprinkle them all over so that when the barefoot natives come on the boat like Joshua Slocum, <laughs> they jump overboard screaming. Uh, but yeah, the reality is, it's like, there's ways to keep yourself, your boat and your family safe. <clears throat> and the main way is to just not go to places where we know that these crimes are taking place. There's plenty of gorgeous places to see that are perfectly safe and really you shouldn't, you shouldn't be losing any sleep over it, especially not the idea of pirates. That's mostly like an imagined thing. Now, if you're a solo female sailor, <clears throat> obviously your security concerns are going to be quite a bit different than for me, a solo male sailor. Um, I spoke with Holly Martin of Wind Hippie Sailing about this very subject recently. <clears throat> she was saying she would sleep at night. If, she said you kind of get the vibe of a place. She said mostly it happened in the Caribbean. She would have a bad vibe about a place. She was you know, a young girl by herself on a small boat so people could see her in the dinghy and stuff. And she said if she had a bad vibe, she would ask other cruisers to keep their VHF on at night. And she would sleep with her handheld in the bunk so that she felt 
if she heard something, she could just call and then everybody would turn their lights on, you know? Um, she also said there were a number of nights where she locked herself in her boat, but she never had anyone board and she never had any anything actually happen. But she said there were definitely situations to where she said she felt unsafe or unsure and her spidey senses were tingling. Um, but luckily nothing ever, ever happened <clears throat> to her or to her boat. She never got robbed either. <clears throat> so obviously women already know that, that, that they have a different security concerns than men do. Um, and even solo sailors, it's like we're more, more vulnerable being solo sailors, like I mentioned, than a couple or even a, you know, a crewed boat with multiple people on board. So I hope this clears up any questions you have about security. You can definitely like look further into it and check out Noon Sight if, you are, if you're interested in seeing where the hot spots are and where safe places are and all that stuff. And um, knowledge is power. You know, it'll <clears throat> knowing what's happening in the world actually happening and not just like some kind of like doom news that's like trying to make you scared of everything. Knowing what's actually happening from cruisers who are out there cruising, that's going to give you a lot of peace of mind about the whole thing and um, make you feel better about it. Thanks for watching. The next episode is the final episode in this series. It's called The Impossible Dream, Ways to Make It Work. And I'm gonna go down a bunch of different options and possibilities of ways you can think think about traveling by sail, either full-time, part-time, maybe chartering boats in different places. <clears throat> We're gonna talk about ways to make that dream, what seems like an impossible dream, a reality so that you can start getting creative on your own and set plans in motion to achieve your impossible dream. Thanks for watching. Fair winds until next time. If you enjoy the content on this channel and would like to contribute, you can consider joining the Patreon crew. Thanks for watching. Fair winds until next time.